Hello folks. Welcome back to another thrilling video on our channel. You've surely heard about the famous Loch Ness Monster, affectionately known as Nessie. But do you really know this fascinating story in full? In this video, we'll take a trip back in time, exploring memorable sightings of the creature and presenting the most famous theories about what it could be. Let's dive in. Our story goes way back to the 6th century, with St. Columba, an Irish missionary. The first recorded sighting of Nessie was described in his literary work, Life of St. Columba. St. Columba recounted how he saved a man from the clutches of the monster in 565 AD, while crossing the river Ness. I bet no one imagined this legend would be so ancient, right? But the first official sighting of the creature happened a millennium later in 1880, and was witnessed by a professional diver named Duncan MacDonald. He was tasked with going to Fort Augustus, near the Caledonian Canal, to locate the exact spot where a cargo ship had sunk, at the request of an insurer. While descending into the dark depths of the lake, Duncan found the sunken ship and naturally began his tasks. However, as he examined the keel to assess the damage and worked under the boat, he saw a massive and strange creature resting on a large rock nearby. Deeply frightened, Duncan signaled to be pulled up and was immediately retrieved. Upon reaching his support boat with his team, his colleagues described him as very pale and white as a sheet. He couldn't stop trembling from fear, but once he calmed down, he described what he had seen. According to the diver, while inspecting the ship, he saw an animal very much like a giant sea reptile or a massive frog. Even though he was a professional diver, Duncan MacDonald never dived in Loch Ness again. Truly terrifying, isn't it? In 1923, Alfred Cruikshank presented an account in which he claimed to have seen a creature about three meters long with an arched back. But it was in 1933 that the Nessie legend exploded. A hotel couple claimed to have seen a terrifying creature coming in and out of the water, causing quite a sensation. A circus even offered a substantial reward for capturing the creature. This offer led to a wave of visual reports, culminating on April 19, 1934, in the most famous photograph of the monster, known as the surgeon's photograph. However, decades later, in 1994, it was revealed that Marmaduke Wetherell, a British actor, screenwriter, and director, had faked the photograph in pursuit of a journalistic scoop. But how did they do it? Well, they used a toy submarine with a plastic neck mounted on top. While there was a forged photograph in 1934, in 2007, very real footage was presented to scientists. On May 25, 2007, Gordon Holmes, a laboratory technician, filmed a video that he claimed showed a black creature, about 45 feet long, moving rapidly in the water. The video was examined by biologists and indeed depicted original footage of an unidentified animal with physical characteristics resembling those of a plesiosaur. Though not definitive proof of its existence, the video is among the brightest monster sightings ever made. In 2016, researchers inspecting the bottom of Loch Ness in Scotland found a 10-meter-long creature there. But don't worry, this time it wasn't a living creature. It was a cinematic model used in a Billy Wilder film, 54 years ago. The model of a monster detected at the lake bottom was a prop made for the filming in 1969 of the movie, The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes, in which the detective investigates the disappearance of a man near Loch Ness, where he encounters the legendary monster. What a scare, right? Most reports of Loch Ness monster sightings describe it as resembling a plesiosaur, a large aquatic reptile that lived during the Mesozoic era, but is believed to be extinct. Plesiosaurs had a long neck in proportion to their head and moved with the help of flipper-shaped limbs. This led some cryptozoology researchers to suggest that the Loch Ness Monster could be a surviving descendant of this extinct species from the late Cretaceous period. However, skeptics argue that it's unlikely that a single individual could have survived for 63 million years, and if this hypothesis were true, it would imply the existence of a small community of such creatures. Although it may seem unlikely for a species considered extinct to still exist, there have been similar cases. One example is the coelacanth, a fish believed to have gone extinct along with the dinosaurs 66 million years ago, but was found alive off the east coast of South Africa in 1938. 
The coelacanth still exists on Earth today and has a long lifespan, living for about a hundred years. Some scientists argue that describing the Loch Ness Monster as a plesiosaur doesn't make sense, as plesiosaurs didn't typically raise their necks above the water, contrary to what is often reported about the monster. Additionally, plesiosaurs were adapted to warmer climates, whereas Loch Ness has extremely low temperatures. Based on this, a group of scientists proposed an alternative theory, suggesting that the Loch Ness Monster could be a relative of the plesiosaur, a dinosaur adapted to different climates and inhabiting the Arctic Ocean or the Atlantic. One report contributing to this theory is the sighting of a creature with plesiosaur-like characteristics, such as a long neck and flippers, as well as bright eyes. Such a creature was sighted on the island of Stronzi, northeast of Scotland, in September 1808. Described as being 55 feet long, with a 10-foot neck and six legs, this creature was dubbed the Stronzi Beast. On the morning of September 25, 1808, a local fisherman named John Peace was fishing off the coast of Rathisholm Head, in the southeast of the island of Stronzi. Looking towards the beach, he noticed that some seabirds were gathered around what appeared to be the carcass of an animal on the rocks. Intrigued, John approached in his boat. According to the fisherman, the creature was large, with a serpentine body, a long neck, and three pairs of limbs. George Sherrard, another local resident, was also present at the scene and approached John. When he got close enough, Peace saw the remains of something he had never imagined before. This account was described by Bobin Dosevsky a contributor to the vintage news. The carcass could only be thoroughly examined a few days later when it washed up on the beach, due to the difficult-to-reach location where it was seen by John Peace. This time, it was found by George Sherrard, who was present on the previous occasion. Dosevsky stated, Sherrard, along with three other men, studied the creature in detail and measured its dimensions. It matched the previously described dimensions. The discovery was so impressive that all witnesses had to swear before a magistrate that what they saw was real. Both the skull and vertebrae were removed and sent for analysis. Unfortunately, the skull was lost during the bombings in London in World War II. However, the vertebrae were sent to the famous anatomist John Barclay, who stated that they were unlike anything he had ever seen before. Even today, we can see drawings made at the time depicting how the creature looked. Upon analyzing both descriptions, it becomes apparent that both the Stronzi beast and the Loch Ness monster are very similar, raising suspicion that they belong to the same species. The distance of 194.8 miles between the regions is also taken into account. So, could Loch Ness be a place where this species gives birth to their offspring, migrating back to the ocean afterward? Well, analyzing the geography of the region, this would be quite possible potentially explaining the sporadic sightings that have occurred both in Loch Ness and other locations in the same region. The most currently accepted theory among researchers was corroborated by a scientist who collected water samples from Loch Ness in Scotland for DNA testing, suggesting that the legendary Loch Ness monster could be a giant eel. Neil Gemmel, the lead investigator, said that the project initiated last year found a surprisingly high amount of eel DNA in the water. He cautioned that it's unclear whether this indicates a massive eel or just many small ones. However, he stated that the idea of a giant eel is at least plausible. The DNA samples analyzed did not provide evidence supporting the idea that the monster is a plesiosaur. Before starting the project, Gimmel said he didn't believe in the Loch Ness Monster but wanted to take people on an adventure and contribute to science in the process. I think it's unlikely that there is a monster, but I want to test that hypothesis he said. What we will have is a really cool search for the biodiversity of Loch Ness. So, what do you think? Is Nessie real or just a product of imagination? Regardless of the answer, the legend of the Loch Ness Monster continues to intrigue and inspire us. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about mysteries and incredible discoveries, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and leave a like. Who knows, maybe one day we'll uncover the secret of Loch Ness, right? Now, if you want to learn more about the great gas giant Saturn and discover more about its structure, rings, and how it was discovered, check out the video that's playing on your screen right now. See you next time.